All right, portfolios, cool. Can you embed your Twitter feed? Great question. Um, it used to let you embed Twitter and Instagram. You can't, uh, it doesn't do it as easily now, but I'll show you a hack of how you can link um, to some of those items. Um, especially when you're trying to keep something up to date, you really want to, uh, you don't necessarily want to be changing your pages all the time just because it's uh, intense work. So how can you kind of maximize and um, maximize that workflow? Maybe that's the way to say it. Okay, so tonight we're looking at leveling up with Google Sites. I was trying to think, again, I should put the cringe face back up. Um, I, was, I was a little worried at first because I was thinking uh, maybe I don't make sites that are that crazy and who am I to say level up? So if you have experiences, I know a bunch of you mentioned you have experiences with Google Sites and you have tips or tricks, um, drop them in the chat as we go along because you probably have amazing ideas that I haven't thought of. Uh, this is just sharing some of what um, I've explored. And I also realized that when you're creating your sites, everybody kind of has their own workflow. Uh, so I tried to group our discussion tonight into kind of three um, bigger areas. So I'm gonna show you a couple sites. I'm gonna show you how my thinking has evolved over time um, from a really, a site I was super proud of at the moment, which doesn't look as exciting now uh, to some that I'm working on right now. and that I may be getting carried away with. Uh, so we'll share a little bit about that. And then as we work through the site, we'll talk about that piece about getting organized, um, that visual look, uh, which I think can really help enhance a site. Uh, and how do we keep that site fresh um, so we're not changing it all the time? So that's kind of the goals for tonight, the plan for tonight. Uh, if you have other questions or comments or ideas, feel free um, to drop them into the chat. But I think we may even just start with a portfolio idea because it seems like a lot of people are talking about portfolio. Um, cool, awesome, here we go. So I'll switch this over. Hopefully we don't all get a crazy bit there. So just a little bit about my story with Google Sites. Um, to me, I just started using them as a way to curate pieces. So when we were first exploring digital breakouts, probably four years ago, three years ago, uh, I was looking for somewhere to put all the pieces. Um, so I had my little interactive slide with all of the clues, but they also had a Google form. And I didn't really wanna send people three or four different websites. Uh, so being able to put that into one Google site was really exciting for me. And like I said, at the time, I thought this was absolutely amazing. And now I think there's so many things I could have designed differently. But that's the joy of technology, isn't it? You play a bit and then you realize there's better ways to do it. So last year, um, we did this creation series uh, at McBride for families. And I was trying to think again, how do we share all the resources with families without it being a new link every time. Um, so we actually used uh, just a Google site and we just had our three buttons for our three sessions. I found the visuals was a big thing that I hadn't necessarily played with before and the visuals all acted um, as their own buttons. And then thanks to Canva and the Noun Project, I could make these cool banners um, that were consistent throughout. I still needed to play a bit more with the layout. That one wasn't so exciting. So something as simple as the template, the three-row uh, the three row template, which we'll show you, kept it really nice and clean and organized. And then bringing those pictures in from Canva meant uh, that I had that really visual kind of digital interactive handout for them to have from our sessions together. So then this year we went, uh, our school created a little in-between site for when kids are um, changing or um, are at home. Uh, so this is our kind of in-between site. 
And in here, I was really playing uh, with those colors, trying to stay consistent with our school logo. Um, we worked on it as a group. So with this one, it was really uh, important because we were doing all of the grades to really think of what one page would look like before we tackled all the other pages. There were little tweaks that we made along the way. Uh, we also had to think of who was editing the, the website and what would be edited. So as much as um, the template in the Google site looks the same, our choice grids um, uh, are updated in the published link. Uh, so it's a little hack that we did so that th we don't have to all be on the website um, and we don't all have to change the website all the time. And then we're also able to link out to other sites. So the board had created a cool resource uh, for families in this transition period. So we're able to link that straight from our website. So it looks like a button, uh, but we're able to just point them to another place. Uh, so a lot of possibilities there for really streamlining and having a home base um, that we wanna send students to or uh, help them kind of navigate. So the one I'm working on currently, which it looks a little messy, I'm still deciding if I like it, uh, is a site for LLC. How do we bring all of those? So the main thinking that came to, to mind as I was designing this one was, how do you take all of those areas that you would have in a library learning commons and bring that to a digital space? Um, so it not just being books, um, but how do you bring in those provocations and those invitations? Uh, along with the books and all of those pieces. So instead of um, just the list, I actually created a little photo grid. I love taking my own pictures, so I got a little crazy and you ran out of two there. These keep changing as I fine tune. Um, and I'm just trying to look through which pieces will link to digital um, and so things that are on Instagram, can I just use a hashtag to link it so that that will update and I don't have to keep changing the website uh, versus what things do I want to page and how will I organize it? So that brings us to that first piece, which really is uh, having, <laughs> getting organized. I, I forgot what I, I called them much cooler things here. There you go. Get organized is what I called it. So I think a lot of times when we go to a website, we do what we do with a Google Doc, which is we just jump in and we create that first page, which is awesome. Uh, but I think when we come to designing websites, you just kind of want to think of who's my audience and what's my structure. So if we started with a portfolio, I'm just in Google Sites and I click the plus sign to create a new site. Um, so we'll show you just some image options here. I don't always use Canva. Um, if I can, I'll take my own pictures first. Um, sometimes I'll use Canva though for, a lot of times I'll use Canva for the buttons, unless it's something visual like the library page. Uh, it's just my hack, but really you can use anything and we'll show you that there's a search built into Google Sites. So when you're designing, it's really up to you what you feel you want to invest your time in uh, and what will make the difference for your audience. Um, I think it's hard when we're starting to do all of it. For me, the buttons, uh, those visual kind of cues, um, I, I'm really trying to push myself to take the picture, uh, but Canva was always an easy go-to um, to kind of get that symbol and uh, design something consistent. And they have the square and it's fast, uh, but we can use anything that we're kind of comfortable with that's already in our toolbox. I don't know if I answered the question. <laughs> Hopefully I did. Okay, so this is my new site. It looks very basic right now. We're gonna try to jazz it up um, and look at some of those pieces. Like we said, before we dive in, we kind of want to think of what that structure is gonna look like. So if I'm doing this for portfolios with my students, uh, then I kind of want to have a chat with them even ahead of time of what those sections are going to be 
you're not married to them. That's the cool part about a Google site. Uh, you can change your mind at any time. Uh, but the more you change, you want to play with that, that organization uh, because the structure of a website is a bit harder to change than changing slides in a Google slide deck, right? You're not just moving pieces around, you're sometimes um, changing the whole page layout. So I'm going to call this my portfolio. Uh, so the first thing as we go along is you have your pages um, and I have my blank page here. So a lot of people just start typing, uh, putting their text in, and then I come in here. I'm just double clicking uh, to use my quick control panel, but everything's uh, over here on your insert um, menu as well. So I go into my images and a lot of times people will go to Google image search which works. These are Creative Commons images, images you have the rights to use. Um, so it's great copyright wise. And then we try to resize till we're happy. Nothing wrong with doing that process. And that drives me nuts with uh, Notice how when you line things up, you get your little um, grid lines. They're there to help you balance your design out um, as you're exploring. So nothing wrong with what I did right there. Uh, I just find it's easier and the page looks nicer if I use some of the layouts that they have um, available to me. So let's just get these guys out. Um, and again, this is my portfolio. So I want the first part to be a little blurb where they talk about their portfolio and then I want it to go to three pages. So I'm going to use this um, layout with a picture and the text and then I'm going to use this layout with the three options. Even though I don't want all of these text boxes, I'm still going to pick that three um, column layout because it means that it will all be balanced and I don't need to struggle with any of that. And then I'm just going in and it, you can kind of see how I already have that structure that kind of supports um, that visual navigation of my page. So I'm gonna have a page of who am I my learning uh, proud moments increase. So I'm just going to pause for a minute. We did a lot there. I uh, just want to give you a chance that if you are clicking and exploring that you can look at your insert tab, look down to the layouts, Try a layout or two out on your page. Notice your text. If you haven't used Google Sites before, double click uh, to get your little control panel and everything is a double click. So I can double click on my text and I get my text editing toolbar. You have your headings. This is great when um, we don't, we're not really able to just change the font size, uh, but you are able to change the size of your font based on uh, what it is in your flow, if you will. Uh, so we're able to change those up. Again, I'll make sure that's consistent so that I have that consistent feel. Anybody use the layouts already? So just give me a thumbs up if you're ready for some more. If you have questions, drop them in the chat. We're ready. Woo. 
Okay, you guys are rocking it. Uh, so right now, I'm trying to save all the look stuff for later, even though I would do it right now, but <laughs> trying to stay organized to my plan. So right now I have my three uh, pages, so um, my three sections. So I wanna go make my three pages. So just coming into your pages, we can just use that plus sign and we can just create the page. So who am I? Notice you do have your advanced functions. Uh, I don't ever use those, but I do use my properties. Um, especially once I've created a layout of a page that I want to use consistently in all my sections. So if I wanted every page to have an intro and then um, three details in my pages, I can then duplicate that layout. So think if we're doing an inquiry um, or think uh, as you have students working on big projects in their portfolio, if you have a template that you want them to use, uh, you can really set up that structure and uh, have them duplicate the page so that that structure is always there for them. Just double checking the chat. Uh, the other thing as we go through is you're going to see naturally as we create a page along the top, you get um, a piece on your menu. So let's go back to home. I'm going to look at proud moments. I'm going to make a page for proud moments. And people may know this already. So if I have proud moments, I may want them to think about their proud, proud moments um, at school and at home. So we're going to make a page for at school. Notice that you can take this page and you can connect those pages. Um, so again, this is where that organization is kind of key. I just put it behind, I didn't put it beside. So I'm just taking that page and overlapping it onto Proud Moments, which now means it's a, a sub page. Uh, so now my menu just holds that one placeholder um, and then I can have sub pages below that. So the best illustration coming back here is that uh, on my menu, I see grades, but all of these grades are under um, that grade tab. Because again, if you had your menu, you had kindergarten, it would only show me a few. I want to make sure that if families came in, um, the home page is really obvious. But again, if they're stuck, they could go to grades and they could find that class that they're trying to navigate. So thinking about how your colleagues are going to navigate that space um, or how your students are going to navigate those that space um, is really helpful. So I have uh, my sub page. The other thing though is I may have a page that's not really super important. Um, so my reading log. Oh, I'm not a big fan of reading logs, but we put it in anyways. <laughs> um, so it's something I want them to have on their website. It's something that's going to be uh, linked to their proud moments. Uh, again, that little three dots in Google always gives us hidden properties. You can actually hide it from navigation. So if there's pages that you have that are kind of extra information um, that you want them to be able to click to uh, if they get there, but you don't really want that to be a big part of your site navigation, being able to hide uh, is a great um, little option and you can show it again at any time. So you don't, uh, no, no choice is a long-term commitment. Everything's a short-term kind of exploration. So the biggest thing uh, when we're exploring is really uh, capitalizing on those layouts and exploring what our pages kind of look like. And for me, when I create sites, I often will sketch it out first. I'll try with one page to kind of see if I like the look and then I'll start duplicating and creating the other pages uh, because a lot of it's that back and forth um, design wise. Questions, comments, going too fast. Want me to show you how to make this up page again? I'll do that again. So right now um, there's two ways I can make a sub page. So right now I'm on proud moments. 
um, I have at school and I want to put another one of at home. So I can either click on the three dots and add a sub page so it would automatically understand. Or sometimes you don't know what sub pages you want right away. Uh, so you have your sections and then you're deciding how you're going to group them later. Uh, so you can use your new page option at home. And you can take any page and move it. So I'm just holding it, um, clicking and holding, and then I can rearrange it in the order. This will change my navigation order along the top, but I can also overlap it onto a page and it becomes a sub page. And you can have sub pages to sub pages. Like this can get crazy huge. So you can kind of see how your page can be a tiny little site, uh, kind of like my Let's Create that just was three pages, basic info, nothing too exciting, um, to something a little bigger with lots of possibilities. To me, this piece is really key. You never want this to be so big that you can't get to your main ideas, and that's where the sub pages are really helpful. How are we doing? The, is this helpful? Is this making sense? Questions, comments? So great question about content. So a couple things you can do if you have a lot of content on a page. Um, there's a tool I haven't used a lot but I was playing with today and under um, in the insert section, you have something called collapsible text. I want to say, so just to show you, I'm just using the little preview button, which looks like a computer and an iPad um, or phone. So with collapsible text, what happens is you just get the title, and then you can expand and see um, the text underneath. So if you feel there's going to be a lot of text, uh, that would be one way to tackle it. The other thing to remember is that you can insert a Google Doc, a Google Slide. Always be careful about your share settings, but um, that's another way to put several pieces of information into a page uh, so that it doesn't become overwhelming when you look at the amount of text. One other feature that you have in the insert option is a carousel. So if you were looking at different concepts or different categories, um, you could make them as visual slides, as images that they could flip through and explore. So to me, those would be the things I would do. Uh, alternatively, if I thought it was too, um, too big and too long for them to scroll through, then I could make buttons to three sub pages uh, but there isn't really a flow on text kind of option, if that makes sense. All right. Hopefully that answered the question. There's so many pieces here that I feel like I'm still learning about uh, as I'm exploring, like what's possible, what isn't possible. Um, and yeah. I haven't, because I like the visuals, um, I haven't spent a ton of time having too much text on a page. I find that if I'm designing, um, like even here, one of the reasons for putting grades in was to, if um, folks don't scroll, um, which is possible, we don't always scroll down on a page. Uh, the other thing is to always check what it looks like on a mobile device, a lot of times, we design on a computer um, and we don't necessarily know what it looks like on a phone or on a, on a tablet because it will take a different feel and look. So that preview button's a great um, piece. Also a great piece as we're teaching kids kind of that design and how design adapts to different environments. I also, originally when I started, I'd always just do the images as a link 
Uh, and I found myself putting um, the text link and the image link, just if people are using text readers, uh, they have both options um, so that it makes it a bit more accessible. All right, if you guys are game, we'll just keep it going here. Hopefully everybody's okay with that. So I think for organization, um, I think I'm gonna bring the headings into the next piece that we talk about. Cause I think it will uh, help us as we look at looks. So I, those that have joined Happy Hour before know I have a problem. I spend way, way, way too much time um, getting crazy about how things look. So <laughs> it's really up to you how crazy you get or how fancy you get. Um, I think visuals really help communicate, but I also realize that's my bias because that's my preference. Uh, so I always have to check myself and think of what others would, what would help others navigate the page um, and just check those different options. So we're going to look at a couple ways that we can make this more visually appealing uh, and look at what we can include and how we can um, really help people navigate the content on our pages uh, as we're exploring. Okay. So the first thing I want to do is I want to personalize this space, especially if it's a portfolio. We want kids to be uh, putting their own um, feel and touch on this page. Uh, so the very first thing I want to do before I do anything is I should probably rename my uh, site so I don't forget. Uh, so from this front page, I often can change the image. Now, a lot of people will go to select image, which is awesome. You have lots of possibilities here. There's lots of really clean images um, that Google's already selected, which are great for kids. If you're wanting to enhance your web page, this is where I think using your own pictures um, is a great idea. But another great idea, I'm just gonna see if I can get it open, is to use a website like Unsplash. So there's great websites out there that allow you to access Creative Commons images. Um, Unsplash is amazing. It's creators around the world that are sharing their photos for free. You don't even have to give them credit, but I like to do it at the bottom of the page just so we um, model that digital citizenship. So if I wanted something portfolio, I want school, this is probably not the best search term, uh, but I like this one. That looks good. Or even that one looks nice, nice and bright. I actually have a picture that looks like that. I like the lockers. The lockers is my feel. So I'm gonna download this picture and see there. I don't know if you guys saw that. Uh, at the bottom there, it tells me who the picture is from and that it's on Unsplash. So I'm going to copy that and we're going to bring that picture into my portfolio. This just makes the portfolio mine and it gives it a, a, um, a more personalized feel if you want. So I'm going to upload from my downloads. There's that picture. Nice and trendy and cool. Kind of love that. That looks awesome. And then what I'll do is down here on the bottom of the page, I'm gonna add a text box and I'm gonna paste that little um, unsplash. I'm gonna put it on, I don't know why I do this, but I just put it on the left hand. Uh, I want it right aligned. And uh, this is where I'll use my little painter's palette. Each of your sections on your website has a painter's palette. So I don't really want this to stand out. Right now it just kind of flows. I want this to kind of feel like the bottom of my page. Um, so I can come in here and I can give it emphasis. So that kind of feels like it's the end um, or the bottom. The other thing that you'll have access to, which is underneath my button here. So I don't know if I'll be able to do it. There we go. Uh, each of your pages has a footer. So this is where I could be putting um, a link to um, my Twitter handle uh, for some of you that are support staff. Uh, I could be putting um, my name on the bottom or what project it's part of. So lots of possibilities there for something that goes on every page. 
So again, Unsplash is kind of my go-to uh, if I'm not taking my own photos. Uh, and it just, again, gives it kind of that personalized feel. So great point uh, from Jennifer that if it looks good, people will engage with it more, right? We're trying to invite them in. So the same way that we set up our provocations uh, and Daphne, um, it's always great to talk. You probably have better design tips than I'm giving right now, but always fun to um, see how those visuals kind of enhance that feel and that exploration. On that note, we also can change our header type. So if I really wanted this to feel more like a digital portfolio, I could make this my cover, especially if it was my art piece. Uh, because I know Daphne uh, has some of her kids designing and they may have something, um, a piece of their work that they want as that cover image. So it feels much bigger uh, when you're navigating it. Uh, they still have that large banner if I want it to feel heavier. Gives me more of that feel that this is a home page uh, versus my small banner. Uh, and I can even just do titles on the sub pages if I don't want the picture to get in the way or it's a lot of visual content underneath. So I'm gonna give it the large banner for now. And I lost my image. What not to do? Got too excited. So I have my page here. I have my um, three buttons. Just coming back to uh, that consistency and that look, we want our page to kind of have that feel um, that the colors go together. So just looking at my homepage image I picked here, I think light blues, uh, browns, even a gray might work. Uh, so I'm gonna go into themes. And again, I'm gonna try to pick a theme that's gonna help communicate my message, uh, but also speaks to me. So I have to admit I have a go-to, which is level. I just love that it puts that little divider at the top um, and that it highlights. The yellow doesn't really make sense with my cover image, that, kind of, that color kind of clashes. I may try out the gray. That feels like it goes together better, but I'm thinking the blue might be even better. It kind of pops, but it doesn't compete. If you wanted to get really, really fancy, you can come to the paint bucket and you can even use your HTML code. So for those of us that hung out in the spring and looked at Canva and I shared coolers, um, I can even put that picture into the website and find those codes. So this is where you can get as crazy as you want, or you could be saying, Tina, what are you thinking? That's craziness. I'm not gonna worry about that right now. So um, you can get as crazy and get as creative as you like in those environments. But finding something that matches uh, and then that kind of aligns, um, helps that overall feel and sense that uh, the site kind of has that brand or that um, shared experience, if you will. So for the images, again, I like to use images as buttons instead of it just being a plain button. Um, it, again, is that visual provocation for uh, colleagues and for students that there's something there for them to navigate. Again, I want that text still, uh, but um, I want that there. So we were exploring, just trying to see what we could put in here. So I'm gonna put the world. Again, it fits with my blue theme, uh, but it has meaning to what we're gonna explore. Proud moments. And again, kids may not have an idea yet, so you may just have set buttons that you want them all to use. I haven't played, I don't know if anybody's tried yet, if you can make a Google site now and push it to kids like we do with Google Slides. Um, I'm gonna put proud moments for growth. And uh, increase, why not? Again, picking pictures that kind of fit in those blues, they kind of go with my um, cover image I chose. Uh, and then for me, what I would do is then on those pages, 
I match the picture that I chose to the title. So when they click on that button, they're going to go to that title page. Again, this is where um, having a similar color scheme doesn't feel like you're jumping around everywhere. Um, and the other thing I would do is um, even though I have proud moments and then I have three sub pages, to help them visually know that they're in the same section, I would either take the picture off completely here or I would add the same picture. So that visual is helping them see that this is, um, is there's that similarity and that continuity to this section. So now when they go home, we have our cool picture. And then when they're clicking on this, we're gonna link it so that they get to who am I? I'm just gonna pause and take some questions, comments, ideas. Um, so just for those that uh, Unsplash is just one, you may have a great picture, Creative Commons picture search. I just found it really hard to find um, people that said uh, that you don't have to give them credit, but that you can give them a shout out, which to me is just um, amazing, easy to attribute, really super simple. Uh, the website for the colors is called Coolers. I don't know if that's how you're supposed to say it. Uh, and Coolers has lots of different tools. I have some of my favorite color schemes uh, saved. <laughs> um, so I can actually go in and I kind of have five or six that I go to. Um, so one for my school, uh, this one's one that I use for a lot of personal projects, but you can also uh, pull in pictures and match those colors to your pictures. So when I was working on a project, I used a picture I had from PI and then I was actually able to get those colors um, right from the image. Um, but yeah, again, I get carried away. Daphne just reminded me about a piece. One of the things is you don't really have that option to change your fonts. Your only option is really what comes up in this text toolbar. Um, so you're able to change the size or um, the value of the text, I guess you could say. Um, and by changing the theme, you change the font. Uh, and within that, you can usually change uh, between a couple font styles, but you don't have that full control. So if you are looking for that full control, you need to go step up to a fancier tool uh, like Wix. Um, I'm trying to think of good ones. GoDaddy. Uh, but I like that this is built into what the kids already have access to. It's safe. We know it's there. Uh, it's free. And um, it's also free for us as educators. So we can really focus on what we're bringing into the page. Uh, but yeah, that's some of those pieces. Okay, I see there's a couple questions. So we're gonna link the page first. Um, so I'll, I'll then show um, our success criteria, how we would add that in, um, or just one of the ways that we've been kind of tackling it with the pages. Um, when you're coming to curriculum expectations, I think design-wise you can come into media literacy, but also the arts curriculum if you're K to eight. I know, um, high school, there's lots of options. Uh, if you're looking at portfolios in particular, I think I would focus in on those metacognition expectations that are in all of our curriculum strands, especially the arts, math, um, language, uh, of how they're reflecting on their learning. Okay, let's link. So I have my who am I, but right now it goes nowhere. So I'm gonna double click and I'm gonna click on my link and then I can put in a link to anywhere but I'm gonna to link to the page, which automatically comes up. So I'm gonna say, who am I? I don't, I like to link both because I don't know where they're gonna click. And again, I want that 
experience that they get where I, they need to go, um, no matter how they kind of navigate the site. So I'll link both and apply. So now when I click, it will take them to that page. Um, doesn't change the top, they can still use the top navigation, but this just makes it a bit more obvious in case they don't know what that toolbar is for at the top. So I'll do it with Proud Moments again. So I double click on the picture, always does that zoom in thing. So I'm gonna just check it to get it off. I'm gonna click the link, go to Proud Moments and apply. And same with the text, highlight, link, Proud Moments and apply. I always forget to hit apply. Um, I don't know if you find that, but it's like the thing I forget the most. Now, if I wanted to add another section, because this looks okay, but now I want a section right here in the middle um, with uh, maybe an about, uh, I have the success criteria for my, my blog, uh, for my portfolio. So I can click and create any kind of tab, and I'm gonna call this success criteria. Um, and we'll put it right over here. I'm gonna put a picture in later, uh, but I wanna move this above my three menu. So I'm gonna use the little handlebar there, those little three dots, and I'm going to bring it up. Now that emphasis is really cool because now that success criteria kind of is getting lost. So I can decide whether I want to kind of just let it blend into the background. Um, and I'm actually gonna go back to regular here and I think I'm gonna blend this in to the background, emphasis one, because I really want that to be the beginning and then the success criteria will be highlighted and then they'll see those three options. So again, that handle on the side, those six, eight dots allow you to rearrange any of your sections that you've added onto the page. All right, more questions. I just realized the time. See, it's always too much fun and then we, uh, we get carried away. Again, that layout is kind of key. Um, so if you do have a site where kids are adding several pages, being able to figure out what that page looks like uh, and then duplicating it makes uh, a great difference. And that emphasis to me really just allows you to create those visual breaks in a page so it doesn't feel overwhelming. Uh, again, I, I don't wanna emphasize success criteria like that. Maybe we emphasize welcome to my portfolio and then this guy just um, is gonna be the regular. So again, now I've kind of changed that up. I don't usually use that big block of color unless I um, want it to kind of look as part of my uh, banner, if that makes sense. So I'll go back and go back to regular. So playing and kind of feeling out that flow uh, is kind of key. Okay, so I wanna show you a couple ways that you could link outside sites. I know our time's coming to an end. Um, and just a couple pieces that we could look at. As you can see, laying this out is awesome. But if I have to update all of these pages all the time, with a portfolio, it's not as big of a deal. Kids will be adding a new artifact. So it literally could be on the pages. Each time you come in, they add a new piece to their uh, flow or they're just using that um, layout of picture information. Uh, so there's that reflection and there's that image that they're kind of, or artifact that they're adding to. For us as teachers, if we're using this as a class homepage, if we're using this for our department work, for sharing with colleagues, we're gonna want to have some pieces that just update all the time so that we're not having to go in and do the work all the time. Um, and we may be working with a big team of people uh, and we don't necessarily want everybody messing about in this space. So there's a couple things we can do um, that really streamline that process. I'm just gonna go back to my LLC page uh, to show you some of those. So one of the things 
uh, that I can do is I can take my Twitter and I can actually make it a page or a link right from my top menu. So I have my Aylesbury LLC page, so I can take that link. Um, I don't just want to put it on the bottom of the page. It's linked there already in the footer, but I want them to really see it as part of the menu. So in my pages, I'm in that second section there with pages, I can click on the plus sign and I can add a page from a link. So when I say new link, I want to say visit uh, our Instagram page. So I left it to open in a new uh, window just so that they won't lose the website. That's really up to you whether you want um, those web pages to open on the same site, uh, but that will mean that they can navigate back uh, over time if they want to. So that's one way that you could add your Instagram or your Twitter. The other way though is I can link it to my actual objects. Um, and to me, that's where hashtags are awesome and I don't have any going yet, so I'm just, that's, this is what I've been debating. Uh, is I, if I do maker posts, I don't really wanna have to update those pages all the time. So I could take the hashtag and I could link the hashtag to one of my objects. So instead of it going to another page in my um, flow, I can add that link right here on the line. So just like we did with linking to a page, I can put any outside link. So again, I'm gonna take that uh, page there and drop that in and apply. So now my uh, page, when they click, it will take them straight to that hashtag um, that they can explore. So another way to link. One other way that you have that I used to use a lot, but I'm not finding I'm using as much just because visually I'm getting a little snobbish, I think. Uh, you do have the embed option, so you can drop in an embed uh, link and see if it will embed. Social media often doesn't let me embed, uh, but that's where you saw here for Let's Create. We were able to um, embed our Flipgrid. So we were able to embed great when it does a load for you. There we go. So I was actually able to embed our Flipgrid so it looks like it's right on the web page. So anything you can get an embed code for, uh, you can use that option. Um, again, I find I do a lot of these picture links um, or you can add a button. So if I double click, wrong, I did that wrong, sorry. If you insert, you can use a button visit us on Instagram, drop my link in there, and I get this really cool looking button. So it really stands out again. The difference between a button and um, the text is really how you wanna emphasize um, that link. Uh, again, I'm a visual learner, so for me the visual, um, the visual image works as a better button uh, but in my flow of text, I'll often use the button for things I really want them to click on. And you do have a couple options design-wise, what that looks like um, or how they can explore it. So a couple ways to add links. One other piece, and then I'm going to check our questions before we head out. One other piece is to remember that you can bring your docs and your slides in. Um, so if I go to Pages... I just realized I deleted the pages and then I didn't do them here. So I have my curated collection. I want to put in my um, choice grids that I've been working on so I can click. Again, I'm going to use that layout so they're nice and balanced. And I'm going to click in here and I'm going to insert from my drive. You need to make sure that your share settings are set to open or that they're set to be visible. So my um, hack is I put everything in a folder for this website and then I make sure the share settings, I often just put everything to be anyone with the link can view. Um, I know other people, depending on what you're sharing, it's not always possible. So 
I'll go to recent and hopefully I can find them real quick. It's great when technology, uh, so there's our treaty week choice grid. So I can fine tune that, make sure it's um, set in. Now the trick here is that if I change anything on this in my Google Slides, it will automatically change on my website. So this is where we can really um, streamline um, and uh, help speed up our workflow. Uh, if I want to design a website and I want it to be dynamic, but I also know that I won't be able to come in here and do um, that designing all the time. And that looks terrible. I don't know how it ended up with three. There we go. Still not looking good. I'll leave it on the other side then. <laughs> uh, and again, I can do that with a Google Doc. Um, again, I like the visuals, so I find I use choice grids more. Uh, but you can put anything in that way. Our time's gone by. I thought I was going to have more than enough time, and now I feel like I'm running out. So let's take the questions. How do we publish or share the site? Those are great questions. Um, so coming back, let's, so Leslie, hopefully we answered your question about your Twitter feed. Um, I haven't found a better way. If somebody does have a hack, let me know. I'd love that. Tyler, I wish Google Classrooms let us make a copy. I hope it's in somebody's update. For us, we've really just had to walk kids through, um, which is a bummer, um, just creating those sections and those sites. You could, I think you can still, you can duplicate the site and send it to each kid too if you wanted to. Seems like a lot of work though. Hmm. So Daphne to publish, uh, if I hit my publish, it will publish my site. Um, I must have published this before, so I go from draft to current, so it's going to show me what the changes are. And once I publish, the first time it's going to let you name your site. Let's do my portfolio here. So when I publish, because it's my very first time, it's going to let me um, name my site. So this comes, Jennifer, to what you were saying about doing something that's easy. Uh, it's still an ugly link, though. So I find I go to bit.ly and make a bit.ly for the sites just so it's easier. Um, and I can decide who views my site. A lot of us that are on school board accounts, um, you uh, can change that. So you can actually make it public um, or restrict it just to a small group if it's just for that class. Once you publish, you get that link and you can share it anywhere. So at any time, you can publish your changes. This is different than a Google Slide or a Google Doc. So with Google Slides and Google Docs, we make a change, we see it right away. With a website, you're making a change, and then you choose when others see that change. Seems weird. Um, those that have edited websites know that's just kind of um, the go-to. It's also awesome because you can make changes and play around before kids see those changes. If we click on the little drop down, at any time you'll be able to view your published site, get that link, but you can also unpublish. Um, so it's great that way. You can share access just like with our other Google uh, Docs um, and slides and um, lots of possibilities there. One of the features that I've been loving is the announcement banner. Uh, I didn't know this existed. So you can have a little banner that appears at the top of your site um, so I'll give, um, if Jennifer has a session coming up, sorry, Jennifer, and she wants to put it at the top of her site, but she doesn't want to change the site design. She can use that announcement banner to, um, put it up temporarily and then it will disappear. Clara, do you use the, uh, embed code from the publish to web to get rid of that bar? We'll all want to know that hack. You'll have to let us know what it is. 
Catherine, I think that's why when we go to Google Sites, remember Google Sites can just be one page with one button. It's really up to you how far you go. Um, and a lot of it, uh, if you're just designing kind of a step-by-step, -step, uh, Google Slides is really cool. Uh, there's so many possibilities with Google Slides. So it's okay to say that Google Sites isn't going to work for you right now too. I always forget to change my share settings too, Gurdeep. <laughs> so one little trick, and um, this is actually a funny story. So we were about to send out that website to all of our families. Uh, and I thought, oh, I should just double check. So I viewed the published site. I took my link. Uh, and one thing that I'll do is I'll go into incognito mode incognito window. So that gives you a chance to explore your website without um, your login info. So I'll always go here and I'll try to navigate and case in point, I notice that I can't log in. So for me, I realized that we could log in, but we couldn't, I couldn't see any of the links that I put in uh, because they were all docs that only Peel could see. Uh, so that incognito Again, if you don't use it, it's just those three dots in your Chrome browser and go to a new incognito window. It's a great way to test out um, your website to see what other people would see um, and to kind of make some of those predictions. Yeah, I can tweet out those choice boards. Uh, really, the ones we made for... Um, the one I made for Treaty Week and the one I made for Islamic Heritage Month are often based on the stuff the board's kind of coming out with. We were just trying to pull out specific starting points for friends. Kayak is fantastic for next week if anybody hasn't seen that yet. I'll, t I'll tweet those out tonight um, right after we're done. So again, announcement banner, you just click on your settings, you go to announcement, um, so you can show the banner, uh, pick a nice fancy color. This is my banner. I love that you can even put a link, so register now. And you can put the link right there on the top. Uh, we're gonna open in a new tab. You can decide where they see it. I always say on all. I make sure it's on and now you get that little banner that shows up on the top of your website. You do have to publish to be able to see it though. So just remember that part. All right. Well, this was a whirlwind. Uh, so hopefully, <laughs> Uh, lots of people have great stuff for Treaty Week. I know we we're just talking about that on the, so a lot of the pieces I pulled were from Gretchen or from, uh, Gretchen shares so much great stuff and Cheryl has a bunch of great stuff on our Peel page. So it's just starting points, but yeah, there's, uh, tons out there. Can't wait, uh, for the discussions. Time to go by fast. Uh, so this is recorded. I'll tweak it so you get the front matter taken away in the end. Um, I think this is also a great time to say there's so much out there. Like I said at the beginning, it's just picking what you want to start with. Uh, if Google Sites is completely new, just even use it as um, a home base. It makes a great home base uh, for resources that you're adding to. Uh, but yeah. Hopefully it was helpful to someone. Let me know uh, what let me know what you uh, would like for future happy hours. I know people last time mentioned uh, coding as November and December come up. We can do some more coding. Uh, we can do some more design stuff. I know we've never gotten into Photoshop Mix. I keep putting it on the list, but nobody picks it. Uh, I know somebody asked about Canva and documentation. We could look at Jamboard, simpler. Um, but you may be rocking it already, but yeah, thanks for joining. We went over our time. Hope you have a great night. Missing you too, Jennifer.
I'll have to hook you up with some baking. <laughs> See ya, everyone. Have an awesome night.